thanks, Debbie. I really appreciate You're that. You're welcome. Oh, uh, but this whole event is all Debbie. So she put this together, made all the arrangements. I gave her one instruction for this event: make this a John Chu event. Oh, uh, so. I failed John in a couple ways because it's not a John Chu event, because John would not approve of this whatsoever. Uh, he would not approve of being recognized. He would not approve of any of this. Uh, and I think when I woke up this morning and saw the rain this morning, I think that was his signal, I'm watching you. I'm keeping a close eye on you. Uh, but Debbie, thank you for all your efforts, but this, this grew from we're just going to do a little ceremony inside the EOC to she coming to me and saying, I think we need a tent to we need to clear the whole parking lot to we need to cut the whole building. So, but Debbie, thank you for all your efforts on this. And so, how I failed John. If I was doing this in John Chu fashion, uh, we would probably all be out in that field right now in the duck blind, uh, undercover. Uh, because John spent many hours out in that field uh, training dogs, which was kind of unique. Another way I failed John today was uh, John would not approve of his picture in our hallway. He would have approved of a picture of Abby in our hallway. <laughs> and I need, I need your help because he had three dogs here and he I forget had, the... He started with Tolly. Tolly, okay. That was my favorite. Tolly was most everyone's favorite. Then we had Abby. And the last one, which I know you have met, was Ruby. So. And uh, those but, were the three that were connected here. And Abby was the one that spent most of the time here. That's the one most of the people remember. It's because she came as a puppy, and that was why always at lunchtime he was out there training. So, if you guys have a picture of Abby, we would very much love to have a picture that we could hang in our hallway. Of Abby also. Oh, I have. There she, are more pictures of Abby than anyone else in the family. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And, and I don't doubt that for a minute. Uh, and, it, and if anybody knew John, uh, you could have a meeting in his office and not even realize that there's a dog hidden underneath the desk because the dog was so well trained. Uh, I don't think he ever came to work without the dog. Uh, and uh, hurricane. That, that would be Isabel. very true. That was the only time because the command center. Uh, and really, dog probably should have been here for that. Would have helped us along quite a bit. So anyway, I can't, I can't tell the John story without kind of telling you the DES story and, and why I wanted to dedicate our EOC to John. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the DES story, how we got here, why we're here, and, and, and why I wanted to do this dedication. So. This all starts back many, many years ago. And if you go across the street over to the Public Works building, that used to be the Sheriff's Office. Public Works and DES were all in the same building. And if you really take a walk around the building, it makes you scratch your head on how we all fit inside that place. But we were pretty much sardines inside of it. And we had a director at the time with a vision of a new facility, uh, moving into a new place, and luckily, we had a commissioner group that agreed, and uh, the project started. And we got a lot of grant funding from the state to build this place and to build a, the facility. And in 2000, we opened up this facility and, and uh, moved out of the basement of, of the Public Works building and moved into this facility. So that was the year 2000. Shortly after that, our uh, department director departed uh, and our deputy director kind of went into an acting position and we went for a, a pretty long period without a real department director and I think in February of 2003 is when John basically came on board with us and as usual uh, change sometimes is nerve-wracking and really afraid of change and having a new director come on board, that's a lot of change. And, and I think we're all very nervous. And if you know John, John is very much the type of guy within two, three minutes of sitting in a room with him, you felt like you knew him for the last 20 years. Like he was just somebody that just opened up 
and you just felt like you knew him. Uh, so he, he came in and at the time we had, I'd say we had some pretty active issues going on and, uh, and I, I should have defaulted this at the, at the very beginning. So some of the stories I might tell today, Todd, I've already pre-written a disciplinary report that uh, Beverly has already pre-approved and it's sitting on my desk and you can sign off on it at, at any time because I'm probably going to get in a little trouble for some of the stuff I say. But, but uh, so anyway, John came in and uh, I'd say within the first 48 hours, everything that was not right, he immediately righted the ship and made, made things not perfect, but gave us a direction. And what we were totally missing when we came over here and when we moved into this building was we were not a department. And we were far from being a department. We had an EMS division that was, I don't want to say dysfunctional, but was very much standalone. I just recently was promoted into the supervisory position in the EMS division. And uh, my predecessor, his primary goal was not to move into this building and kind of be an independent department away from DES. So one of my first jobs coming on as supervisor is staying connected to DES. And actually, if you look at the original blueprint of this building, the back two offices in the very back, one was supposed to be a storage room, which is currently Lori's office. Uh, and the other one uh, was supposed to be a lounge for the dispatchers. So I think the dispatchers still hate me because we took the lounge and we took the closet. So there was no storage space as soon as we moved in. But uh, we, kept, we kept the organization together but we weren't quite a department. So John came on board and really just started changing that. And I, and I call uh, what we were to John, I think at the end of the day, was kind of John's science project. Because John was the root of EMS. He was a paramedic before we figured out we should call them paramedics. He was a law enforcement officer. And I think he watched too much Adam 12 in emergency. <laughs> but he came around and was a law enforcement officer and a paramedic, before they called paramedics, before those two shows came out. And I think most of us sitting here in the profession uh, that have been here for several years, Scott in the back, Lori, probably Jeff, like emergency is why we became what we were. And on the law enforcement side, Adam 12 was probably why a lot of people became law enforcement. Well, John got a dose of both and was both and had a background in both. Uh, John worked for forestry for, for many, many years, and he never really talked about himself. And that was one thing unique with John. John never spent a lot of time talking about the past. He always talked about the future and where we're going in the future. I got all the good stories from Buddy on John and his family. I've heard a couple good stories from his family and friends. And, uh, so I was able to piece his career together, but he never really talked a lot about it. Uh, but from, from working forestry, he went to NHTSA and basically helped direct writing the book on where the EMS profession was going in the future. And him and a team, which uh, Dr. Delbridge was invited today, and I'm not sure if he's floating around, but uh, was part of that team. And uh, I've always wanted to sit down and have a little time with uh, Dr. Delbridge to hear a little bit of John Chu's stories. Uh, but they basically wrote the initial book on where EMS is going in the future. And if anybody has an opportunity somewhere down the road, dig out the old agenda of the future for EMS. And John and a lot of fellow people that he worked with uh, inked that. And I think Dr. Delbridge wrote a lot of it, I think. Uh, so, uh, he basically blueprinted where we were going in the future and helped name paramedics paramedics and, and Roy and Johnny did the rest to publicize us and, and here we are today. Uh, fr from NHTSA, John retired and started a consulting business and that's why I call him our science project because he consulted on a lot of EMS systems and really built 
some national EMS systems that are really recognized today, and he was the original consultant that helped do that. Uh, but we were the science project because everything that he had did in the past, he put into this building, put into his people, put into the staff. Uh, so, how did John build this as a department? And he built it on relationships. So, one thing that was interesting, his first couple months here, uh, he would have, we would have people pop in and do different things. So, so one person he had come in was uh, Skip Kirkwood, and didn't know Skip, didn't know who he was, uh, but he sat in our EOC for like two weeks digging through our data, figuring out of our data, and digging through our CAD records. And uh, so Skip left, and left John a lot of information on where we stood, where the system is, where it needs to go. And then later, all these people I kept seeing John bring in, I kept seeing pop up in the Journal of Emergency Medical Services in articles. So he was bringing in the leaders of emergency medical services and emergency services to help build this department and, and give us a path and lead us down, down a road. Uh, so one of the interesting things John did when he first came here was, and, and I see some old timers sitting in the crowd that were here that know this, but we, again, we're a department, but we weren't a unified organization. We weren't one entity. Uh, and to prove that, each division had their own patch had their own insignia, had their own thing. So one of the first things he did was said, get rid of those, and kind of came up with our departmental patch that, that we have today. So, um, so he's still on the sleeves and on the chest of all of us, working in the streets and working, working in the field. Um, but that was the beginning of us becoming a department. The next thing he did, because the deputy director left shortly after his arrival, so it was basically kind of John and me for a little bit, and one of the first things he did was Robbie back there. Uh, we, we said we need somebody to head up the 911 center, and uh, Robbie was the first 911 center communications chief of this department. And I know John was very proud of you and proud of the things that you did. And I'm very happy that you came to hear that. Uh, but uh, what was unique uh, as, as we started building our team and in, in forming DS, and I hear you, John. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, so as, as, as uh, we were formulating our team and, and putting things together. Uh, in total John fashion, what happens? We have a hurricane roll up the coastline. And I think he was only here for maybe seven months. And my first hurricane that I worked in DES was Floyd. And um, I think that was back in 1998. And I was very new as the EMS supervisor at the time. And we were still in the basement across the street and the director came in, the deputy director came in, I came in and at the time we were, I could answer the 911 call, take the information, dispatch myself, run up, respond in a unit, take off and then clear myself and put myself available back in the dispatch room. That, that's kind of how small we were at the time. And, and uh, that was what we considered an emergency operations activation. Well, when you have a forest ranger that has worked forest fires that crossed four or five states at one time and is the incident commander of that, things get run a little bit different when a hurricane comes and he's in charge. And every time I see a hurricane come up the coastline, I get an ulcer and feel uneasy. And it's just not a good day when it's starting to happen. John is like a kid in a candy store when disaster strikes and he loved working that type of scenario uh, and he basically taught us how an emergency operations center should run and that's why I can't think it's more fitting for John to dedicate this emergency operations center in his memory 
uh, because he really taught all of us how to do that. And there's many, I think, uh, Bill back there experienced some of the Mercy Operations Center activations. I know Robbie's been involved with them. And he really led the path on how to do that and really showed us the right way in and sometimes the wrong ways of doing things. Uh, so through his career, to pick on a few people here, uh, we've got former Commissioner Wargotts here. And he was one of the commissioners that was here when John first arrived. In, uh, a lot of changes happened under your leadership and John's leadership, and this department appreciates everything that you did. And I know John was very close to you, and you guys worked a lot together, and I appreciate you coming. Uh, another person that, that John worked very closely with, and, and I think the last conversation I had with John is directly because of this person, which is Steve Wilson, sitting in the crowd there. Uh, John spent a lot of time out at Steve's house, and I think Steve is probably the most educated on emergency medical services and how they should run than anybody in the county. Uh, but you guys spent countless hours talking DES. And I think you guys both helped build DES. And I still see a lot of things that you do that are John Chi type things. And, and his memory lives in that. But a lot of this and a lot of the way we are today is, is because of the result of you. And Clay, I'm going to pick on you because John would be very proud of you also. Uh, Clay is very much a leader in emergency medical services. He's the head of the board at MIMS and John would be very proud of that, knowing that, that you're there and steering the ship for us. And Russ, Russ, I wish John was here to see everything that you've done to MEMA, which is now the Maryland Department of Emergency Services. Uh, it, you couldn't have blueprinted it better in a John Chu blueprint. Like he would be so proud of what you've done and where you're going with the department. And I wish he would have been here to see your ribbon cutting when the, when the building's finished and you move back into your new facility. But I know he would be very proud of everything that you've accomplished and that you've done and he preached everything that you, you also preach. You were two of a kind, and, and thanks for coming today. Uh, so, I wanna point out John Roberts back there, and he's saying no, but I'm pointing out John because John, if you walk around our building, the, the nice cool graphics that you see and logos and actually the John Chu uh, picture in the hallway and everything. John is the one that created that and did that for us. And John, thank you. I know you were a good friend of John's and, and visited quite frequently. And, and uh, thank you for everything that you've done and thank you for helping <coughs> us preserve his memory. So, uh, Kathy, I'll pick on you for a little bit uh, because she was probably involved in the original activations that we did and actually saw us evolve into a department. Beverly was kind of there, not at the very beginning, but kind of ducked in there in the middle of it all. Todd kept a close eye on us across the street on everything that we do. Uh, and, and I am sure John would be extremely happy to see you sitting as county administrator. And uh, you're doing a good job leading us down a good path. And uh, hopefully we can keep the John tradition alive in our building. Robbie, I know John loved you quite a bit, and, and we did a lot of stuff together. And I'm glad that you're here, glad for this dedication, and, and I know deep down you feel the same way I do about the stuff that he did for us. But John was very much the type of guy, I don't think he ever told us what to do, how to do it. He just believed in his guys and gals, and he just kind of let us do it and he was there to like bump us every so often and steer the ship and get us on the right course but he never told us what course to take and that's one thing i respected the most out of him he let us do our job and and was there to pick us up when we skinned our knees and, and there to pat us on the back when we did a good job uh see some people floating in the back that work with john uh and as long as long as we're here his memory will last forever and hopefully his memory will last forever. 
Uh, I think it's very fitting that there's pictures in the hallway. Uh, because when we activate, he is definitely the person I want looking over us when we go into an activation. Uh, I would not want to go into battle with anybody but him. Like he, he was, uh, he always knew the direction to go and what course we needed to do. And he saw this county through a lot of emergencies. Uh, and I'm still learning from him, even though he's not here, I'm still learning from him on a daily basis. Uh, God, I totally lost my train of thought there. I'm so wrapped up in, in all the things that he did, uh, but he really made this a department. He made emergency services a department, and his legacy will live for a very, very long time. And, and I think Clay and Russ can kind of testify. He helped the other emergency services on the Eastern Shore build their emergency services, because all of us, when John came in, I think in 2003, we were all kind of this fragmented system. And he kind of helped blueprint that system. And you guys were there to help guide that blueprint. And uh, he would be very proud where everybody is right now. I know he'd be very proud of you, Russ. And I know, Clay, he'd be very proud of the things you've accomplished. On the other side, even though Queen Anne's is still better. <laughs> <laughs> Not true, not true. You keep us on our toes. Uh, but uh, I'm kind of nearing the end here, but uh, out of everybody, I was probably the closest to John. And he really taught me. Sorry, but he really taught me how to lead this department. And I'll never forget that. So, Debbie, there's one thing I forgot though. There's one story I didn't tell, which is Doc, since I just caught eye at Doc. <laughs> so I don't know if very many people know how Doc became part of this department, but it's kind of an interesting story. So it was our first activation when John, John got here, which was Isabel. Hurricane Isabel. I don't know if anybody remembers that. I clearly remember Hurricane Isabel. Uh, but we had this guy call us out of the blue and said, hey, I'm a physician. I live in the Graysonville, Queenstown area. And I just kind of had to retire and I'm used to working 80 hours a week. And you got this hurricane coming. And uh, I just want you to know I'm out here and I'll be happy to do whatever you need me to do. And I was like, okay, I really appreciate that. Took his information and everything, hung the phone up, and we we're sitting in our emergency operations center. And uh, John was like, who was that? I said, ah, it was just another quack calling us and thinks he's going to save the world. Uh, and we really never, during the hurricane, connected up. But the quack called us back <laughs> about six months later and turned into our best friend. And, and uh, I think you and John were quite a team when John was here. Like, between the two of you, you kind of built this organization, you and John. But John, John got here, the building was built, uh, but we weren't a department. He made us a department. And Doc, you were a huge part of that, huge, huge part. And you still are, whether you think so or not. But, but anyway, Debbie? Well, before you leave the podium, that was excellent, because I know you're nervous. <laughs> and I want you to know I made it through this without crying, because that was, that was pretty close. But it but ain't over. So. I know, I know. Um, I just want to tell you something, and it really struck me as you were talking, and it makes me think back to John, and, and you know, I didn't sit in his office every day like you did or anything like that, but you made a statement that you could meet him for the first time and he would make you feel like you've known him forever and always very comfortable. Um, you spoke of a lot of leadership qualities and I'm here to tell you, if you don't know, there is definitely a difference between a leader and a supervisor. And John was a leader. I don't know if you realize that you are a leader too. 
And so, the family understands and knows that the things that John was able to teach and educate that Scott emulates here, um, and you are a phenomenal leader. You are a phenomenal representation of everything that you learned from John. And so you mentioned that our patch, and we wear our patch, and that's always going to represent John. Uh, I don't see that going away any time in my career. Um, but he lives on in you, not just the family. And you teach us. So uh, there's first responders out here and um, people that look up to you for those same leadership capabilities. So I just want to make sure you understand that because you are well loved, well respected, and we learn so much from you. And that is because of John and your qualities. So I wanted to thank you personally and on behalf of our department. Um, so I know, don't cry. Cause you can't. <laughs> don't do it. I don't have tissues. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. Um, I'm being good. <laughs> I would like to invite Miss Bunny up. I know she had wanted to make um, a few remarks. So if you do, you want him to stay up? You want yeah, to sit down? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Stay up. Uh -oh, I'm in trouble. We have to, we I'm have in to trouble. cry. We'll cry together. Um, Perfect. Perfect. Those were all lovely things about John. In 1971, <clears throat> after we were married, we moved to a hole in a canyon, five miles down in a canyon at Lake Mead, 11 miles due south of Hoover Dam. And I can assure you, John was a royal pain in the ass. <laughs> Pardon me, kids. Because we got involved in first aid. Because we were so isolated, uh, we were 75 miles from the nearest town in um, Arizona and an hour and a half's drive to Las Vegas, which is where ambulances came. We were on the Colorado River, so we had rock climbing people, we had swimming, we had boating, we had fishing, we had water skiing, and there was always disasters because there were always people that came from LA for the weekend who had their truck filled with beer and a little bit of food and off they went. So we learned early on in the Park Service that they didn't have squat for, for first aid. So John embarks on every course class known to mankind between LA and Phoenix, and I had to go with him. And that started the adventure into the development of EMS. He was with the National Park Service. We were at Lake Mead. We were then in the mountains in uh, California. All of it continued going evolving. And I swear that I had the first minute clinic ever in my house at Lake Mead because I was the only door that people could knock on when they needed help. So that is the beginning of John as it evolved. Um, about five days before we lost John, I knew he was having a great deal of communication because of the vaccine distribution. He was talking to you guys, he'd been talking with people throughout the state, other directors that he still knew, Ted Delbridge, and we finally sat down and got to talking about Queen Anne's King. And what you don't know is that the reason John even applied for the job was he was consulting and was doing it out of the home and he was driving me crazy. And so I found an ad in the newspaper that said, this is the perfect opportunity for you, John. You ought to apply for the job. He said, they don't want me, I'm too old. I said, apply for the job. You never know. Well, so we were laughing about that and laughing about in it, who knew when we met in the 60s and Cliff Brown and John were hunting over in Kerwin Creek. Creek, Creek, that many years later he would end up as director of emergency services in the county. John has always loved Queen Anne's County since that time. He loved coming here and the thing he loved the most when he got the job was the reception of the team. And through all of the EMS 
the EMS for the future that was put together up in Nova Scotia, Ted Delbridge was involved. There were many important people throughout the country that when he came here, you called it a science experiment. John taught, called it bringing together class act people and building a system that would shine above others. And that's what you guys did. It wasn't just John, it was the talent of the people that were here. And you were receptive to his ideas, his mentoring, his, his teaching, what he knew. You probably called him on the carpet a time or two for things that he didn't. And I think about the only thing he didn't really love doing here was attending the commissioner's meetings. <laughs> I love it, Todd, just but, so you know. <laughs> but he did have a good relationship with most of them. So anyway, I am, I am, John was here at the right time for John and at the right time for you guys. He loved the job, he loved mentoring, and even as we laughed, um, I mean he still, he still had his heart here. And so it was one of our jokes about the dogs, the training. Anyway, that was the history of John um, and his love for this place. And he always felt you were all class act because you were. Now, we have a little thing, a little bit of John to leave here that I think was here during his time. He would be giving you a yellow lab puppy. Uh, he and offer to come mm -hmm. over and train it. I, on the other hand, realized you needed something that did not require a lot of maintenance. So Jules and Jack, if you would like to help. Oh my. <laughs> so John's favorite duck was a canvas bag. We bought this, and you probably know that John and I were very involved with Ducks Unlimited for, God, 50 years. We bought this at one of the events, specifically for his office, and we would like it to go back to his office. So here, do you give that to Mr. Scott? Thank you so much. And thank you. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you a backstory about my office. I want you to know because I'm going to walk you around the building when we're done and I want you to take note of one thing uh, when we rebuilt this place and remodeled it uh, we were fortunate enough to be able to replace a lot of the furniture but I absolutely refused to have any of the furniture in my office removed because it was John's furniture mm. so this is going to have a home where John sat in and on John's John's you desk. Can, you can talk to it on occasion. <laughs> I've had some of the decoys quack back. Sometimes what? I think they're talking to me, but you know that's the condition you're in in, in this phase of life. So here. And, and I've got some. I've got some special things for you afterwards. So thank you so much for this present. Okay. A yellow lab would be nice too, just so you know. Because <laughs> we, we really we really miss the yellow lab. Uh, so uh, Debbie, come on, come on up. So <clears throat> I think how we're going to end this is, if anybody would like to say anything, uh, the floor is open. If anybody would like to come up and say anything, or stand in place. We know or stand in place. It's intimidating. We both feel it. So, I told her I didn't want a pony them and she got, got it anyway. So. Yeah, I got it anyway. <laughs> and if not, that's fine. Um, what we'd like to do is uh, we would like to invite everyone. Um, we're going to have everyone come in. Um, our EOC is open. Our kitchen is open and full of food. Um, so we want to make sure that you do eat something, please, um, and enjoy some fellowship with us, break some bread with us. 
Um, this is this is our time to remember and um, share memories. And as we close, if you're good with that, I would like to invite our chief of EMS up, uh, Chief Scott Wheely. He is going to say a blessing um, for our dedication. And then afterwards, just feel free to meander in the building. We have a beautiful, beautiful 911 center that's been renovated. We'd love to have you take a peek at that. Um, our offices are looking sparkly and ready. Um, we have a warehouse you can see. We have an EMS station. I mean, we'll give you the full grand tour. So whatever you need, we're here for you. Stay as long as you'd like. Mingle as long as you'd like. Um, and if that's um, good with you, I'm going to turn it over to Scott. I'm going to go put my duck away. <laughs> Just a, a real quick story. Uh, I hadn't been here long and uh, you know, I love EMS. I mean, to throughout the, and it's hard to find just as uh, much as uh, Scott does. And one day after I had a pretty significant call, I guess he was listening to the radio more than I than I thought he was. And on his way back home, uh, him and Abby were cruising back towards the Bay Bridge, and he called me and said, "Hey, that was a really good consult." And I don't know half the things you said because they were that new. I, he had little fun names for newfangled things. He said, but that was very, very well, well, very well done. And I'll always remember that phone call because I came from a department that you didn't see the fire chief or, or the big boss unless something was terribly wrong. So it was very nice to have that kind of relationship with the director. So with that, I'm going to ask you all to bow our heads. Um, Father God, in Jesus' name, we come before you now. We want to thank you and honor you for this time that we've gathered together to honor John, a true leader, a true mentor, and a true impact to the Department of Emergency Services and delivery of emergency services in Queen Anne's County and the surrounding area. We want to thank you for our time of fellowship. We would ask you to bless the hands of all the emergency service providers that go forward and continue the mission as John directed it and that's continuing today and to impact lives in a positive manner to the best of our ability. I would ask you to also bless the food we're about to receive and make it nourishment for our body and bless us as we travel home, that everybody travels safely and as one. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.